And it's time now for Alfred University political science professor emeritus. Here he is, Dr. Robert A. Heineman. Thank you for calling in, Doc. Well, thanks for giving me a spot, Brian. Thank you much. Lots to cover today, Dr. Heineman. Uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee is putting subpoenas out to former FBI Director James Comey, former National Security Advisor Susan Rice, former Director of National Intelligence James Clapper and others. And the uh, subpoenas are going to cover uh, any communications that those people mentioned uh, had with Former FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe, former Attorney General Loretta Lynch, former Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates, former UN Ambassador Samantha Power, and former FBI officials like Lisa Page and Peter Strzok. The list goes on and on. Dr. Heineman, can you sum this up for us? What's going on? Well, I think uh, one of the problems um, that the Republicans have had uh, with uh, the Obama administration is that uh, they weren't uh, ready to give up the ship so that after uh, Trump was uh, elected and before he took office, it's pretty apparent that uh, some of the top-level Obama people were doing everything they could to undercut his uh, administration before it even got started. And uh, some of these names... Uh, like Susan Rice, and obviously Comey, and uh, um, I think it's McCabe you mentioned there. Uh, there's uh, there may well be some uh, emails and other kinds of correspondence there that are going to uh, confirm that. And the theory being, I guess, from the Republican point of view, that uh, a lot of this was basically made up. And uh, so we're going to see how far this goes. I think the one you got to watch really pretty closely is Susan Rice. I think uh, she's uh, very bright, and I think she's pretty duplicitous. And, uh, you, you know, she has been mentioned as a possible vice president candidate for uh, Mr. Biden. But uh, there have been a number of instances where she was involved there with the uh, Obama administration, in which it does appear that she just lied or misled the people and uh, did it purposely. So, so I don't know how that played after uh, Trump's uh, election, after he won, but uh, the whole crew of them uh, seems to be involved in uh, sort of fom fomenting or fostering this Russian conspiracy or aggression. I guess they use the term co collusion now because conspiracy doesn't play that well. And um, there may be, uh, there could be all kinds of things there. What's kind of interesting about this, I think, is that uh, uh, we got all this uh, Black Lives Matter and all this other stuff going on, but uh, some of the people here, the Justice Department and the Senate, are sticking and focusing basically on to instances where it appears pretty clearly that some of the Obama people uh, really were way out of line in uh, what they were doing. Now, whether there's anything illegal here or not, I guess we'll just have to wait to see. Now, one of the problems here is, of course, uh, if you may remember during the Obama administration, uh, Eric Holder, uh, the uh, longtime attorney general there, had this wild-eyed idea of fast and furious, where somebody came up with this crazy idea that uh, they would give uh, U.S. weapons to drug cartels, and uh, that would enable them to trace these drug cartels down. And it ended up they, uh, the cartels killed at least one or two American uh, agents with the guns that we had supplied them, and uh, Holder was subpoenaed to appear before uh, the Senate committees or Congressional committee. He just ignored it. He just literally ignored it. Uh, and the same, you might note, with the uh, woman who headed the uh, Internal Revenue Service down there in Cincinnati. Uh, they subpoenaed her before, uh, again, I think before the Senate. And uh, she did appear. 
but she just took the Fifth Amendment uh, in terms of questions. And I don't know whatever happened to her, whether she finally, I, I mean, she obviously stepped down from um, her position, but I don't know if she was ever indicted or not. Now, the whole idea of getting these people before the Senate and getting them under oath is, of course, that uh, the chances of uh, committing perjury begin to go up quite a bit. And uh, as happens in a lot of these cases, and General Flynn is another example, uh, they end up getting themselves in trouble legally, not uh, because of anything they particularly did or that you could prove, but because they end up uh, being uh, charged with perjury or lying under oath. That's called a process crime, Dr. Bob? Uh, yeah, I guess it would, yeah. I'm not up to date on that really tricky uh, legal jargon, Brian, but <laughs> it seems to me that would be as opposed to a substantive crime and the actual crime itself. Yeah, no, that would be a good point. On the topic of General Flynn, Dr. Heineman, uh that judge in this case, uh, Judge Emmett Sullivan, uh, is still not backing down. Uh, the Justice Department wanted to drop the charges against uh, General Flynn, and this judge uh, appointed uh, a, uh, a guy named uh, Gleason to uh, look into it, John, a New York federal judge, uh, John Gleason. And uh, I guess it was this week that John Gleason said that uh, the DOJ was guilty, the Justice Department was guilty of gross abuse of power here. Uh, what is this? I mean, the prosecutors say they don't want to keep going with the case, and the judge says, no, you got to keep doing it. What's up with that? Well, I, uh, I'm i not certain. Uh, one of the problems, of course, is that uh, Flynn has already uh, pleaded guilty. Now, I don't know. I'm not certain whether he's withdrawn his plea or not. Um, but uh, uh, the point is, I don't know where this Judge Sullivan I mean, the judge hears the prosecution and the defense makes a decision. Uh, where the judge gets off then enlarging the whole um, process here by going out and getting somebody else to come in and uh, uh, support his position, I mean, uh, that's really strange. And I'm, I don't think... Uh, I don't think Judge Sullivan's in a really strong spot in that respect. I now maybe there are other examples of people doing that. Certainly, uh, during the um, uh, the busing and these other areas, the uh, civil rights era, there, it was not unusual for judges to go out and ask for opinions um, from specialists in particular areas and things of that sort. But those were simply uh, uh, opinions and advisories of one sort or another. This this goes far beyond that. And this guy Gleason, you know, going out of his way to just totally lambast the uh, Justice Department. I don't see where he gets off doing that. Um, so um, I I just don't think this is going to go very far in that respect. I think Sullivan is way out of order here. But uh, and and the point is. If this gets to the Supreme Court, I, I don't think the Supreme Court are going to be very sympathetic to Sullivan because you're opening the door for judges all over the country to be pulling this kind of stunt. And uh, the whole idea of the judicial process is that you have a formal process with formal parties, and that's how you keep it under control. So we'll just have to see, but it, it is kind of strange. There's no two ways about that. Talking to Dr. Robert Heinemann, political science professor emeritus, Alfred University. The Treasury Secretary said on Thursday of this week, the country should not shut down the economy again if there's another wave of the coronavirus. How's that sound to you, Dr. Bob? Well, I think that's the direction everybody seems to be going at this point. Um, the, the, we've got a huge uh, set of problems that are uh, ripples from... Uh, the shutdown, and I think uh, these demonstrations and uh, the riots and the destruction in the streets, as I said before, um, a lot of that is call, it comes from the fact you've got a lot of young people, a lot of people generally, uh, 
with nothing to do. And uh, uh, given a long, hot summer coming, that's this is going to be a, you know, this is not going to go away, not going to go away easily. And uh, so I think, uh, plus, uh, the effect on the economy, of course, is, is pretty uh, heavy. So uh, I think Mnuchin's point is that, you know, we're just going to have to uh, gut this through. Now, on the other hand, uh, people do have a much better idea, I think, of what kind of precautions you can take and how you can be uh, careful in terms of trying to avoid the spreading of this virus. And if people uh, work in those terms, um, they, uh, I think, can, should be able to hold it down, unless for some reason the virus becomes a lot stronger, a lot more virile than it is now. Typically, these viruses just sort of peter out, and uh, if that happens, uh, then uh, I think uh, a second wave uh, be less likely. But on the other hand, uh, you've got guys like Fauci, Suggesting that we're just at the tip of the iceberg, so um, so that's where it stands. But no, Mnuchin's view, I think, is is you know the idea is the economy cannot tolerate too much more of this kind of uh, uh, lockdown and uh, construction of services and production. Um, now, uh, some people, uh, of course, think well we should get, pour even more money into the economy which, uh, frankly, I don't think is a particularly good idea, but I don't know where the key people stand on something like that. So, But, yeah, it's. Uh, I think, uh, frankly, the economy is, is pr- pretty ready to go. It just uh, has to be people have to be given a chance to get back to their jobs and do what they were doing. Dr. Heineman, uh, from the Drudge Report headlines, Biden warns that Trump is going to try to steal the election. Biden also says the military will have to escort Trump from the White House. Uh, What do you make of this? Where's where's Joe Biden getting this stuff? Well, uh, he's been down in the basement for quite a while down there, and it may be that it's uh, beginning to affect him there. Um, The... um, no, I, I do think there there is a point there in the sense uh, Trump is not going to go away quietly. If he were to lose, he's got a constituency out there that, frankly, is uh, pretty intense and pretty vehement behind him. And uh, so uh, you could uh, you could see a situation where he uh, doesn't uh, uh, concede uh, quietly. On the other hand, it's hard to tell how all this is going to go uh, here as we move toward November. Um, there are, you know, indications that some of these polls are way off in their uh, claims that somehow Biden is way ahead. Um, so I think uh, you have a situation here where you can if you can spread as much um, dirt and fear as possible. Uh, that's the era we're living in. Keep everybody scared. And frankly, I don't think Americans basically scare that easily. So I think uh, we're reaching a point here where uh, the um, a lot of black entrepreneurs and minority businessmen and people like that are saying to themselves, you know, uh, uh, well, here we were in a situation where the unemployment rate was the lowest it's ever been. And now we got uh, these crowds from the inner cities coming in here and tearing up our uh, places and burning them down and causing destruction. Uh, I got to believe that some of these people are beginning to think that maybe the Democrats aren't the answer here to uh, their future. Uh, so we'll just have to say, I must say, though, uh, uh, Brian, on this whole effort to defund the police. It seems to me that the key is to give the police more funds. Uh, I would certainly be highly supportive of seeing that uh, more money goes into the police forces and uh, uh, training uh, be enhanced and that uh, the police be given more people to deal with these situations. Uh, it seems to me that if I'm an inner-city businessman or a woman, I'd like to see some police out there that are effectively trained 
and uh, have enough people to back them up. Uh, this whole uh, defunding the police is one of the strangest things. You know, I, you know, the- Senator Chuck Schumer's on the same page with you on that one, Dr. Heineman. Heineman, uh, or uh, Schumer said that defunding the police is way too radical a proposal to take seriously. Well, I, uh, I hope there's, uh, well, I think there are a lot of people that agree with him on that. And, uh, so when you get some of these mayors, and I think even the governor of California going down that road, you got you got to wonder, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people, I think they've gotten themselves out of touch. Now, uh, the uh, other side of this uh, in terms of funding and such is there may well be the need for some reorganization and making the police forces a lot more effective in terms of working in their communities. And that uh, may well be another approach that should be uh, should be taken, but uh, this uh, idea that somehow the cops are all uh, uh, dangerous and uh, a cause of the problem, I think, is uh, way way uh, off the mark. Doctor Bob, one thing that you also hear besides defunding the police is the idea of demilitarizing the police. And the critics of the police uh, nationwide say that you see these uh, police officers in the bigger cities and the bigger city police officers, anytime there's a big protest situation or a riot or whatever, uh, the police will come out dressed up in camouflage, that they have uh, tear gas and all kinds of big weapons and big vehicles people are not used to seeing. Um, I was actually talking to a supporter of uh, the police the other day who said this was not a police officer but this person said what these people don't understand about the smoke bombs and the rubber bullets and the weapons like that is these are weapons that prevent the police from uh, uh, firing off a fatal shot these actually protect the public when the public's out of control what do you make of that argument well I, I think that uh, the use of tasers and uh uh, tear gas and pepper spray and things of that sort. Although it's you know there's no question that it hurts and uh, can be painful. It certainly does uh, prevent uh, somebody fi- uh, firing uh, um, actual bullets into a crowd or, or panicking and uh, uh, losing control. Um, In other words, it prevents one of those. Uh National Guard situations that they had out in, uh, what was the school? What was the school? Kent State. But, yeah, Kent State type situation. Yeah, and the thing about the 60s and now is that in the 60s, you had a totally situ- different situation. And I must say, I think uh, PBS, their uh, Wednesday night, had a thing on uh, the Black Panthers, uh, the beginning of the revolution and such. And I just saw parts of it. Uh, they were dealing with uh, the Chicago police shooting uh, Fred Hampton up in Chicago, which they did. I mean, they, they killed him. They uh, murdered him. I don't think there's any question about that. His brother, I knew his brother had lived in Peoria. But uh, so there are instances like that. But if you take a look at this book, Days of Rage, that's Days of Rage by Brian Burrow, and he covers that whole era. And Bill Ayers, Obama's buddy up in Chicago, is a key player in all these bombings. It's amazing how many police officers were murdered by these guys during that period. Uh, there were just a lot of killings by these groups of uh, uh, police officers and innocent people as well. Um, and as you know, Ayer's latest book, uh, the last book he wrote, he starts out by saying that he wished he'd have planted more bombs. Uh, so... Uh, that uh, that that area was, uh, I mean, things were really rough then, and you had a lot of police uh, forces that really weren't particularly well trained. Uh, but today, uh, the police forces, frankly, are much better trained, and you don't have the kind of treatment of black people or minority groups by any means that was occurring back there in the 60s. I mean, in the 60s, you still had widespread segregation and lynchings and things of that sort in the South. Um, and then to this day and age, that's uh, pretty much by the boards. By the way, 
I think, a Senate uh, proposing a anti-lynching, a federal anti-lynching law would be a very good idea. That's something that should have been done 70 years ago. Uh, and, uh, of course, the Southern Democrats uh, stymied it for years and years and years. And I think the Senate will, in fact, end up, uh, along with the support of the House, uh, finally get that law passed. Um, but uh, the point is, um, today uh, you're dealing with a much different situation and, frankly, a much tamer situation, thank goodness. Um, and uh, so uh, we just, uh, the problem is you're dealing with a situation where uh, you got all these extraneous factors like this virus and then the huge unemployment resulting from it. And as a result, uh, uh, the uh, ability to mobilize huge numbers of people in short notice and such is uh, a lot higher than it was in the 60s. But in terms of the actual violence, uh, fortunately, it's, it's less. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about this. Uh, Joe Biden the other day said that, uh, actually this was yesterday, Joe Biden said that the death of George Floyd had a greater worldwide impact than the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. is I don't I mean I was one day old is that in 1968 is that true? No, it's absolutely absurd. Uh, if if Biden is saying things like that, look the point with the Biden and the Democrats is they are trying as hard as they can to replicate Obama's margins in the inner cities. Those margins are what gave Obama the presidency. Uh, the huge margins in places like Philadelphia, Chicago, uh, and uh, some of these other uh, large cities gave Obama and enabled him to carry the whole state. Uh, and the Democrats are trying as hard as they can to convince all the black uh, people of color, as we say, uh, to get out and vote and vote heavily for Joe Biden. And, and i got to tell you, I think they got a problem there. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. And uh, so, because, frankly, as we just said, a lot of these people are saying, well, you know, what have the Democrats done for us over the last 33 years that Joe Biden claims that he's been inside the beltway? You know, just what, what good has that been? So, I, you know, uh, I think uh, there's going to be some... Uh, stock taking here on the part of a lot of these people and uh, the Democrats are scurrying as hard as they can to somehow make this situation uh, favorable to them. But to make a statement like that, I mean, that's just totally uh, well, it's, well, I think Joe's been in the basement a little too long there. <laughs> With that, we've got to go. Dr. Robert A. Heinemann, political science professor emeritus, thank you for joining us. All right, always good to talk, Brian.